It is 10 a.m. in Niagara Falls. That is one of the places uh, to be for today's solar eclipse. It's expected to be packed out with visitors when the eclipse does darken the skies this afternoon. We expect more than 30 million people will be in the path of totality and will be witness to an event that won't be seen again in the lower 48 until 2044. And we have Bill Nye, the science guy, joining us now. He's right in the path of totality in Fredericksburg, Texas. He's been schooling us for more than three decades on eclipses and so much more. Nye is also the CEO of the Planetary Society, a nonprofit supporting space exploration. Bill, so great to chat with you about this. What's going to be special about this solar eclipse? What makes this unique? Oh, nothing. <laughs> no, that's irony, people. It's fantastic. First of all, it's going right through North America, Mexico, U.S., Canada, boom, right across during the middle of the day. And uh, uh, the sun's coming out here in Texas. I think the sun will work out for everybody. And if you've never seen one of these things, it really is spectacular. We have this extraordinary situation as Earthlings where our satellite, the Earth's moon, blocks the same width of sky. And there's a fabulous geometry word I love. It subtends the same width of sky as our sun, our life-giving star. And this is, in our solar system, unique. There's no other planet with a moon that blocks the sun out exactly like this. And it's because, <clears throat> although the moon is only a 400th of the width of the sun, it's also 400 times closer. And so it's really a fantastic thing. And as my old professor, Carl Sagan, used to say, if a psychic or tarot card reader or somebody could make predictions with anywhere near the accuracy that astronomers can predict solar eclipses, they would they would be very successful. <laughs> but uh, they can't do that. And this, but astronomers can. And this really, I hope, gives us all pause as we ponder what I like to call our place in space, our relationship to the cosmos. We're here on Earth. It turns to night here in Texas. It'll be a little over four minutes. Up uh, where you guys are in New York, then uh, Niagara Falls, it'll be a little less because of the curvature of the Earth. It, to me, is just magical. It's, it's magical. And I just encourage everybody. I know we all run around. We all want to take pictures with our phones. That's all we do. I know. But just try to be in the moment. Just try to take it in. And the other thing I hope everybody has a chance to enjoy today is the so-called shared experience where we are watching this thing with other citizens of Earth. And, uh, and it's, it just gives you a wonderful feeling of, to know our relationship with the cosmos. Back to you. Yeah, no, Bill, that, you know, you just sort of hit at what I was going to ask you because there are, there's so much made in the media about being in the path of totality. But I, I'm going to be here in New York City, and I think what's more fascinating to me is just this collective shared experience that we're all going to have in North America as millions of people glance up to the sky at the same time and ponder what you just suggested. So, I mean, the question here is, what can people who are outside of the path of totality get out of viewing experience? But I think you sort of just answered it. Well, you'll get the partial. The partial is not bad. Uh, uh, partial eclipse is still fantastic. And you said glance. I encourage everybody to not glance, but to stare as long as you have eye protection. You've got to have the right glasses on. And although these are made of ca cardboard and thin mylar plastic, they are completely effective. You can see here in Texas, the sun is coming out, casting shadows. And uh, you can stare right at it when you have the proper eye protection. Sunglasses, conventional sunglasses will not do the job, you all. If you don't believe me, get your electric cell phone and turn on the uh, flashlight and hold it up to your eclipse glasses and you'll see that you can't see anything because they're about 100,000 times darker than sunglasses. And uh, it's perfectly safe to look at the sun with them on. And human nature is when the thing starts, when the moon starts to get in front of the sun, you just want to watch. You just want to look at it carefully. And so I encourage everybody to have the uh, proper eyewear. And it's just a spectacular experience. Bill, I'm taking a look at some of the clouds behind you. It doesn't look too bad right now, but I know that's oh, in no. the forecast. 
What are you thinking about the cloud situation? Should people be worried about this? Well, the word worried, you know, you can't worry too much about it. Uh, uh, everybody talks about the weather. Nobody does anything about it. But of course, <laughs> I sent a few emails to the uh, powers that be. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so the sun's out here in Texas where it was expected to be cloudy. And you can see, you know, the expression in uh, sailing or whatever is we're expecting the clouds to burn off. And uh, uh, it'll be a, a fantastic experience. So I'm, I'm very hopeful. And by the way, I've been under an eclipse in South Africa in 2002 when it was quite cloudy. It's still spectacular. It turns dark in the middle of the day, completely dark. Birds start chirping, crickets start clicking, and it's uh, still a wonderful experience. And just everybody take those few moments and enjoy it. Now, of course, you're looking at the sky with your sun protective glasses on, but also look around. Look around uh, uh, with the people you're with and just just take it in. But we predict these things within less than a hundredth of a second. And it happens exactly as predicted. And indeed, daylight returns in a few minutes. And the world, if I may, keeps spinning. Uh, Bill Nye, uh, what else is exciting? Having you on our show. Thank you very much for spending some time with us. Enjoy the eclipse. We all will be. Thank you, guys. Carry on. Appreciate it. Happy totality.